Welcome to the lecture number 12, using PowerPoint to perform tasks in a foreign language. Plan of the lecture. Terms and definitions used in PowerPoint. Working with slides. And the last question. Methods of placement and reception of graphic elements for the presentation. PowerPoint provides an easy-to-use multimedia presentation production system, which you will no doubt enjoy learning and which you and your students will find useful for individual or group projects of all kinds. PowerPoint is a wonderful tool for learning in both a student and teacher-directed situation. It can add a new dimension to learning allowing teachers to explain abstract concepts while accommodating all learning styles. Used properly, PowerPoint can be one of the most powerful tools for dissemination information ever known. Employed inappropriately, PowerPoint could potentially confuse students and make learning a difficult process. What is good about PowerPoint? First of all, PowerPoint is fun to watch and fun to make. Use correctly, PowerPoint can accommodate all learners' needs. It has a spell check function, something our blackboards and overheads lack. It motivates students when used in moderation. It motivates staff. PowerPoint allows you to reflect on your lesson and correct any needed changes. Finally, you can create the perfect lesson. Imagine to be able to print out what you did in class for students that were absent. Better yet, turn their accountability on to students and post your presentations online. And the last, PowerPoint is not hard to learn. Our technology staff rates it a B plus for ease to you of use. It should take about one hour to learn the basics. What is bad about PowerPoint? Content can sometimes take a backseat to flash. Watch out for triple P. Computers crash, networks go down, viruses can plug computers. Always have a backup plan. Others can bore learners and diminish PowerPoint's effectiveness. Classrooms need large monitors or projectors to display presentations. Make sure your technology plan furnishes these. With simple TV out cards or VGA TV converters, this can be easily accomplished. A successful presentation can take several hours to develop. PowerPoint game templates are a great way to introduce a new unit or review for a test with your students. It is a break from the regular routine and students love the teamwork and competitiveness of it. All of these PowerPoint games are in the form of free PowerPoint templates that you can open with Microsoft PowerPoint or a free presentation software program. You can then customize them with your own questions and answers. Simply run the presentation in class and you will have a customized game already to go for your students. Uh, let's uh, speak about game number one, tic-tac-toe. Divide your students into two teams. Decide which team is circles and which team is crosses. Circles go first. One student from the team nominates a number or word. If they produce a sentence or answer a question, the team can claim that square. Click on the square once to reveal a circle, then it's the cross's turn. If they produce a sentence or an answer, answer a question, the team can claim that square. Click twice on the square to reveal a cross. The team with three symbols in a row wins. 
click on the play again button to reset the board. Here you can see the screenshot of this game, Tic Tac Toe. So this is game number two, Mystery Squares. The students don't know where the high value coins are, so like treat or treat, the game has a random element. This means that stronger students won't dominate the game. Type a word grammar structure or number into each square. Encourage students to make sentences with words are you added. Encourage students to use the grammar patterns and make a new sentence. Encourage the students to call out a number and answer the corresponding questions. Note, you can change the placement of the coins, but you will have to adjust the animation triggers. If you move a coin from under square 7 to square 3, you will have to change the animation trigger from square 7 to square 3, otherwise the coin in square 3 will only appear when you will click on square 7. So this is the example of this game, where you need to choose the word, sentence or question. The next game, game number three, Pair Up. The aim of Pair Up is to introduce, practice and test common collocations with students. This game works well with both large and small classes. It works well with both teams and individual players. Divide your class into suitable numbers. At the bottom of the slide there is a hint that tells the students how many matches there are. In the center of the slide there is a white box that can contain part of the collocation. If the students choose a word that they think completes the collocation, and it is incorrect, the box will turn red. If the students choose a correct answer, it will turn green. How to change the fill animation to a different color? 
and the surrounding words are set to change to red as if they were incorrect answers. Once you have added in your words, you will need to change the color for the correct answers. Follow these steps. After you have written your words and its collocations, some correct, some incorrect, select the boxes with the correct answers. Go to the animations ribbon. Click on effect options and change the color to green. If your word has two or more matches, you will have to change the fill animation for two or more answer boxes. For example, in this slide we have only one match with, for example, the word in the center. The next game, Ball's Eye. The outer rim is worth one point, the middle rim is worth two points, the inner rim is worth three points, and the ball's eye is worth five points. The value of points should reflect the difficulty of the questions. However, there are no questions and answers in this template. It is just a way of keep track of points. You will need to create your own questions that reflect the content of your course. Once you have prepared your questions, start the presentation and you are ready to play. Divide the students into teams. Ask one student from the first team to nominate a section of the board. All students in the class are free to answer this question. How the students respond is up to you, but you could tell the students to use a buzzer. Ask them to raise their hands or write the answer on a mini board. The student who answers the question associated with A3 correctly, they win 3 points for their team. Click on section A3 and it will change color to yellow. Game number 5. Quiz questions. To create your own class quiz, copy the slides you need into a new PowerPoint and write your own questions and answers. When your PowerPoint is ready, you are ready to play. Divide your students into teams. All students in the class are free to answer the question. How the students respond is up to you, but you could tell the students to use a buzzer, ask them to raise their hands or write the answer on a mini board. The student or team who answers the question correctly wins a point. Like I have already said, this is a question and four types of variants. And for example, the right answer is C and the students need to raise the, their hand and uh, say the right answer. Game number 6. Battleships. When you open the template, you will see 28 squares labeled word. Edit each square and write a word or phrase that you would like the students to use in order to claim the square. The students choose a square using a letter and number combination, for example D3, A4, C6. Encourage the students to make a sentence with the word or phrase in that square. If the student is successful, click on the square to reveal whether there is a ship underneath. You can reward the student or the student's team with a point if they hit a ship. You can reward the student or the student's team with several points if they sink the ship. For example, if the ship covers three squares, award the students three points. Read the original post for more information about how to edit the PowerPoint, move the ships and play the game.
example, this is an example of the, this game Battleship. The next game, game number seven, the football game. When you start the presentation, a soccer ball will appear in the middle of the slide. Click on each of the green strips of grass to move the ball. When a player or team scores, click on the team buttons to record the number of goals. During a real football game, players tackle each other and take control of the ball. An easy way to simulate this is to use a dice. Roll one half and two and the ball moves one space. Roll three half and four and the ball moves two spaces. Roll five half and six and the ball moves three spaces. This will make it more of a challenge for the students or teams to score a goal. The greater the challenge, the more exciting the game is. The football game is also a very versatile PowerPoint game because it can be used with any set of questions. Additionally, the game can also be transferred easily to the students. There is a paper-based version available to download from the original post. Game number 8. Jeopardy. Jeopardy is a game where the players are given the answer and are asked to form the question. However, many ESL quiz games ask a question so the teacher can judge if the students have understood the material by the answer they have given. This template can be suitable for both quiz forms. The template is called Jeopardy because of the board layout. Open the template and you will see the menu board. Each square is linked to a specific slide in the presentation. Click on red one and you will move to the red topic and the question that is worth one point. Each question slide has one box for the question and one box for the answer. Add your own questions and answers to the template and you are ready to play. Start the presentation. Click on one of the squares on the menu board to go to a question slide. Click on the question box to reveal the answer. Click on the answer to return to the menu. I hope you will enjoy playing Jeopardy!
The next game, game number nine, concentration. Concentration is a memory game where the students try to remember the location of matching pairs. This activity encourages the students to remember collocations, definitions and meanings. The template contains three slides. Each slide represents a different difficulty. The first uses colors and numbers as a guide to match the cards. The second only uses colors while the third doesn't use either numbers or colors. Divide the students into teams. This is a turn-based activity, but all students should be paying attention to try and remember the position of the numbers, colors or cards. If the students are correct, leave the cards uncovered and award points to their team. If the students are incorrect, cover the cards again and give the next team a chance. This is a screenshot of this game, Concentration. And the last game, Picture Reveal. A hidden picture is placed under several squares. The first version of this activity only used 9 squares. This updated version uses 9, 18, 36 and 72 squares. For example, level 1 – 9 squares, level 2 – 18 squares, level 3 – 36 squares, and the last level – 72 squares. Students are encouraged to guess the picture underneath the square. Divide the students into teams. This is a turn-based activity. Each team chooses a numbered square to reveal. Once the students have started their number, they must make a guess or say that they don't know what their image is. The reason for this rule is to ensure that as much English is spoken as possible. If the student guesses correctly, click on the images to reveal it. If the student guesses incorrectly, ask to the next group to choose a square. This video will show you how to change the image underneath the squares. Hi, I'm Bev Evans 22 and today I'm going to show you 15 ways to use PowerPoint in your classroom. Uh, I get a little fed up sometimes with people saying that PowerPoint's old-fashioned, not relevant, not useful. I find it really useful. Um, when I started working in education a long time ago, I was at an LSA working in special needs and we had to make a lot of our own resources and we had to use what the school had available and that was mostly Microsoft Office. So I became quite creative with it. And I think there are some ideas here worth sharing. 
There are some ideas that you may have heard from other places before or seen on other websites, but I think you'll still think they're worth sharing. So here are 15 ways you can use PowerPoint in your classroom um, creatively and to support inclusion. I'm going to start very simply with recording audio. You might have a child in your class that struggles with text and yet you still want them to record their work and display it nicely and maybe make a presentation. On PowerPoint, if you go to the insert menu and go to sound, you can record sound directly onto the PowerPoint slide. All you need is a simple gooseneck microphone which you can pick up in a pound store. The child simply presses red to record and stops when they've finished. They can play it back to check it, give it a name and press OK and their audio file is then immediately within their PowerPoint. It means that children who struggle with writing can get more information on their PowerPoints in this manner, maybe just adding a few sentences and pictures to support it. Another idea for supporting inclusion is using layout templates. I know lots of people don't choose to use these, but I found them really helpful with children who might have difficulty um, or additional needs. For example, using this layout template, You've got the click to add text and you've got these icons here. If I click to add a picture from file, the picture is inserted in exactly the right sort of size that I would want. The child has not copied or pasted something inappropriate from the internet and has not had to resize it in any way. They could resize it if they want to, but it looks fine as it is. If I use another layout template, I'm going to show you a third tip, which is smart custom animation. Once the child has the picture in there, particularly if it's a child who doesn't like to do a lot of writing, they can add a few bullet points. I know not everybody likes bullet points in a PowerPoint, but for some children, just getting that key information down is fine. If I write a sentence in here, very simply, and I'm just going to extend this a little bit and then change the colour of that text because I don't like it in white. If I now go to custom animation and add an effect, very simply you can see that when I click the PowerPoint that's going to descend. But if the child then presses return and adds a second sentence, you'll see that in the custom animation power, automatically that has come in with the same animation. So when I press to play, yeah. Don't want to play. Look, ah, it's not playing ball. That they will both come in. I'll do it this way, I guess. If I click once, here comes one. If I click again, the second sentence comes in in the same way, very simply. Third, or rather fourth idea is stop motion animation. Stop motion animation can be easy or tricky in PowerPoint. Depends what sort of level you want to do it on. All you need is a PowerPoint. Um, your drawing tools or some clip art and access to something like Windows Movie Maker. This is a very simple animation made by younger children. If I just click to show you this. And this is a more complicated one showing line drawing techniques using the drawing tools. It's not that difficult to reproduce and there are tutorials on um, my YouTube site if you're interested in doing this sort of thing. Let's go to the next idea. And this is using PowerPoint for art. You can make shape pictures with the drawing tools quite easily, but you can also make texture pictures and you can use the photo editing effects to great effect using all sorts of different things to make composite photographs or collages, whatever you wish. Lots of creative ways of using PowerPoint for art. Another idea is to use word art. This is a, an image that I've put on a PowerPoint. By downloading some unusual fonts and allowing children to use word art, they can make a little shape sort of poem using word art and the transform tools that come in PowerPoint. Right, now we're going to get on to things that maybe are a little bit more complicated. This is idea number seven. And this is about making your own templates. This is a PowerPoint template that I have made uh, using PowerPoint, AutoCollage and AutoShapes in PowerPoint. 
it's not difficult to make your own power themed PowerPoint templates to match themes that you do in your classroom and it looks much nicer than some of the templates that you can download. Uh, as before there are full instructions for this on uh, my, my blog site which is technostories at wordpress.com. Now we're going to have a look at triggers. Triggers are those things that when you click something it's like cause and effect. I've got a few examples of these used in resources. I'm going to start with not this one but this one. This is a counting teaching resource for early years or SEN. When I click this trigger the alien will drop down. Then there's a trigger on the alien. When I click him the number one comes down then you can ask your children how many did they count. And When you click here it says one alien. It's very simply done with triggers. Another example of uh, triggers is this shape reveal activity again made for SEN in early years where these are all triggers and each time I click one something will s reveal so reveals part of the shape you can talk about the shape with the children in the class and they can try and guess what the shape is very simple idea using triggers if you want to get more complicated with triggers, and you can get much more complicated if you want to, you can use them to make word searches. This includes the use of transparencies with your auto shapes. So here we have a word search for plants. And when you find a word in the word search and you click on the initial letter, a transparency overlays it using the trigger and also gets knocked off here at the bottom. I'll just show you with a few more. It doesn't take that long to make this once you've uh, had a little bit of a play around. So that's using triggers and transparencies. We're up at idea number 10 now and this is mind mapping. This is a mind map that's made in PowerPoint. It uses smart art, connectors and text box. It's very, very simple to do. You don't need to buy lots of expensive mind mapping software. You can just show the children how to connect things together. I've done this in an additional way so it's got lots of animation on it so that you could run it as a presentation. But you don't need to do that. It just works nicely as a mind mapping tool. Okay, number 11. This is one of my favourites. This is using motion paths. Motion paths are one of those things in PowerPoint that quite often um, people are not sure what to do with. And I know children in the classroom just find them really funny and, and try and make things whiz all over the place and, and look silly. Motion paths do have a practical application in PowerPoint. This is a letter formation activity and this has been created using triggers and motion paths. So if I play the slide, here's the letter. We want the children to practice formation. You can see that it says start here, so we click the green button, which is a trigger. A pencil appears. I've got some sound in this PowerPoint, so if I want to click here, ah, the child can listen to that sound. And if I click here, this will start the motion path on the trigger. And it will form the letter formation for A. And I can do that as many times as I like. Now on this PowerPoint, if I click through, we've got something that you can use with your interactive whiteboard where the children could go on the letter. And they can ah. listen to the sound. They can have a go write in it and click through the alphabet or you can use the triggers to go back and choose another letter and again here you can listen to the sounds or just choose the letter directly so it's a really good way of using motion paths in a PowerPoint I've got another example here which uses as you'd imagine numbers 
This is slightly different because you can see we've decorated these slides in a different way, but it's the same principle. There's a rhyme here for number formation. You click for the pencil using the trigger, click green for go, and it will go around the route to show you using a motion path. It looks complicated, but it's not as complicated as it looks, and there are tutorial videos on my YouTube channel. Right, next we're going to look at write-in boxes. This is using um, the toolkit, and there ex there's an explanation of this on my blog site, which I've mentioned already, technostories at wordpress.com. Write-in boxes can be used in numerous ways. This it's a template for Jack and the Beanstalk. Each slide has a box here, but on this side we have a word bank to support children, and they just write directly in the text box while the PowerPoint is live. Very simple idea. Another way that I've used this is in this Living Things Think About activity. These are a little bit like um, concept cartoons. Here's the balloon. Here we've got some children posing questions or making statements about what they think. And after you've gone through all of those, the child can write their own thoughts in the writing box another very simple idea. Right, moving on from writing in boxes we come to multimodals. Lots of you may have seen um, Tim Ryland's talk about multimodals. I'm also going to show you a macro here that only works on older versions of PowerPoint but some of you may find useful. So let's look at multimodals. For this we're going to look at this. Usually these would be saved as a PPS file so the children never see, the child never sees it in this view. This is based on the poem The Highwoman by Alfred Noyes. And if I press play, it will take a little while to load up. It says their activity. They have a video to watch here. This is an animated version of The Highwoman poem. And you can click to stop and click again to start it. When they click through to go through to actually work on the activity, there are some writing prompts here at the bottom. So writing in the first person, checking the punctuation spelling, save your work when you've finished, a smaller copy of the video uh, for them to work on, and if they need to, there's another space on the next slide. Um, it's just using the, the toolbox in PowerPoint to add the write on box and just inserting the movie from file. Another way of using um, multimodals and macros is this macro that you can download which is called Drag, Drop and More. Um, I think it's from a German developer and I found it from Alessio Bernadelli's blog on NGFL Cymru um, but there are other ways to find it. Um, it's called Drag and Drop but it doesn't really drag and drop. It's more a click to pick up and a click to put down. So I've got some shapes here and you can see them quite clearly in this view so usually I would say save it as a PPS. If I run it you click the circle to pick it up so you can see it's not picked up and you drag it around the PowerPoint and you can see that it will go around the edge of the shape. You drop the circle and you can click to reveal the shape. It's a very simple macro activity and you can do much more complicated things with the macro activity particularly if you look at Alessia's blog but it's just a good idea that I thought was nice for younger children and those with SEN. Right, we're up to idea 14. Um, this one is one that I really like and this is using PowerPoint to support early skills mouse skills in children with SEN or early years. This uses triggers. This is a simple dot to dot activity. The child has to click on the first dot, 
the second dot and just continue to build the picture in dot to dot form. Now the way I've done this is that when they've finished with the actual dot to dot bits the picture will appear, they can repeat the activity or they can exit to finish. And I've used these symbols because these are universally recognisable by a lot of children with additional needs. Right, finally, we're at the 15th idea. I'm going to show you lots of things very quickly now. I think that PowerPoint is really good for supporting literacy skills in all sorts of ways. You can make comic strips because you've got lots of nice speech bubbles and all you need is clip art and these are all individual auto shape frames that can be filled with a background so that you can give it a little bit more personality. This is a newspaper template in PowerPoint. I've got this in an old fashioned and a modern form and again I've used templates here so that children can insert pictures and make sure they're the correct size without having to do a lot of resizing. <coughs> this is a story maker PowerPoint. This probably looks better if I reduce it. This is a PowerPoint where I've put clip art around the side so the child can drag pictures onto the slide and write a little bit in the box. This is a one for younger children that they could work on together uh, in front of the class based on the story of Owl Babies for retelling the story. And this one here is more creative for older pupils, particularly boys. This is a football themed one. So it's a really nice way of using it. This is a e-reader book template where again they can click to add text. It's got instructions written on it and also in here if I press here so you can view it as a slideshow I've embedded a shockwave file so that the right time and the right date always comes up when the work is displayed. It's just a nice touch and something you can do with the toolbox. Of course there are lots of other different book templates and this one is another one I've got which is based on a an old-fashioned leather bound book and again it's got these here and what I would do is while it's in this view the child would use that to write and then click and the text would appear. Now this is the final literacy idea I'm going to show you. This is inspired by a website called um, picklets and usually I would save this as a PPS file. Um, I'm not really a big fan of the term magpie it, but it was uh, something that I created for somebody else. Children use the trigger here to click through to choose a picture they want to write about. Let's try that one. And then they click on the picture. The picture appears with a useful word bank children who might need some extra support and another one of these fabulous type in boxes that uh, you can type in directly while the PowerPoint is live. So that's it, 15 ideas for using PowerPoint in the classroom. Really we're just scratching the surface. Um, like I say, look at the YouTube site for some ideas, look at my blog site Techno Stories for some additional ideas and you can always give me a shout out on Twitter using my handle at BevEvans22 if you want to find out a bit more. Thanks for listening. I hope you've uh, become a bit inspired. PowerPoint is a useful teaching tool providing added value for both the teacher and the students. A carefully prepared and well-designed presentation, appropriately used during the course of a class, helps the teacher stay focused on a track. A presentation that is rich in multimedia gives the teacher the opportunity to spice up presentations in various ways that promote added interest and engagement for students. PowerPoint also can be used to create as well as enable powerful learning environments. A thoughtful teacher will encourage her students to work together on such products and present their works to the class, thus applying the adage that the best way to learn is to teach. As the saying goes, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do 
and I understand. This is the questions after our lecture. Terms and definitions used in PowerPoint. Name the way to create slides in PowerPoint. And the last question, name the ways to insert video and audio in PowerPoint. Here you can see the list of uh, references that you can use uh, in our lectures in and practical lessons. Thank you for your attention.